All right, what's going on, everybody? We're back. So, I want to give you guys a little rundown, a little update on where we are on the progress of the low C5T billet build. From the last video you guys seen, we were getting the chassis set up and starting to get the diff housings and shock towers mounted up on the chassis. But as you can see now, we're probably right around the halfway point okay so quick update where we're at with it we have gotten the rear completed we used the Taylor a arms the Taylor hubs we installed the IRC shocks we used all the titanium hinge pins on it we got the bumpers done on it I did install the rear brace, okay, and I have to say, this thing is turning out beautiful, a lot better than kind of what I initially envisioned. Um, for those of you that have been following the previous lives, as I said, if Taylor made it, it's on this. Minus the, I see they just released the new aluminum shock cups, spring cups for the uh, IRC shocks. I will be getting those. But we got all the boots, the axles all assembled. All right, everything put in. We've got the center section completed, modified RC center section with the... Uh, bigger brakes to kind of give you guys an idea with the brake system I know a lot of people were shocked to see how thick these rotors were compared to the stock rotors like it is a huge huge difference which this thing will have a little bit of weight to it so you're definitely going to need the stopping power Without a doubt, and I think we'll definitely be okay there. But, um, yeah, so far everything's gone to get her together beautifully. I will talk about a few things that had to be modified in order to make all this work, and I'll cover that stuff. Moving on to the front, we got the front all done up. The only thing that we had to reuse plastic was the low C 5T carriers for the C hubs. I did talk to Mike Taylor. He is going to be making these at a billet aluminum. So when those are available and on the market, we will swap these out. But with the front, the new Taylor C hubs that recently came out, we used them. Of course, I did the A arm kit, IRC shocks. The beautiful shock towers. One little piece that I really did like that I've never used before on anything is the ADI steering rack. The ADI steering rack is definitely a beautiful piece. And just so you guys know, for those that might not know, if you're going to use the ADI steering rack, you have to use the 1.0... Um, servo saver horn now i want to say this this is being set up as the 2.0 okay not with this chassis you could set it up as a 1.0 or the 2.0 i'm setting it up as the 2.0 but i didn't know at first with the adi steering rack you have to set steering rack up because this is based off the 1.0 steering rack so you got to use the 1.0 servo saver and of course i use the t the titanium uh steering rack post on it as well but um the only thing that kind of sucks nobody makes an aluminum servo saver horn so what i'm thinking about doing later on down the road i may end up switching the steering system to a push pull where i can get the dual push pull aluminum servo horn, but then I would have to buy another Fonzie link, which is 
it's only like 36 bucks it's not that expensive but <clears throat> just to kind of talk about um some of the things that had to be modified now on the sway bars i'm not using the uh what you call it let me grab these real quick so when you buy the taylor aluminum diffs he provides these sway bar um caps you i guess you would call them or whatever I'm not using these. I'm using the FRC adjustables where they have a set screw in the center of them to apply the tension on how how you want to set the um, sway bar because stock sway bar, this is only a 3.5 sway bar and when I used these and put them on, it clamps that sway bar solid where it does not move in the front suspension same thing with the rear suspension was binding so what i had to do is i took and i filed the center of the frc's if you can see because i am going to change these sway bars to the 4.0s which is a bigger sway bar so i had to clearance those blocks in order to accept a 4.0. They just squeak by with the 3.5. So I had to modify that. The outdrives that I'm using are a new outdrive that just hit the market last year from uh, what I understand. They're the new hardened steel 2.0 version and they would not go into the bearing carrier that is supplied with the diff housings and obviously because they weren't on the market yet so when mike makes these that bearing carrier was not machined to accept them i had to machine them well i'll say sand them not machine but i hand sanded them to clearance them enough to accept these out drives and the reason is i could have used like the regular uh, FLMs and stuff like that. But I'm trying to beef this platform up to be able to hold um, a good size big bore. Because one of the things is for the 2.0s, you can get the IRC CVDs, but they do not make the center drive shafts. So I have to use... Um, stock low C drive shafts which I hear these hold up pretty good now I ran a 40 GT in this for three years and I never broke a single thing and I used to rail the hell out of that 40 GT but I'm going to a much much bigger big bore now now I didn't I'm using the FLM heavy duty CVDs I could have got the IRC's but it would have been like 500 bucks for a set of them. I'm going to try these first. If by some chance they do not hold up, then I will upgrade to the IRCs. But I chose these because you can, if you break a pin, you can swap out the pins. You don't have to, like the stock losies, they're pressed in. So they're much easier to change if you do break one by chance. So that's kind of why I chose to use them for now. And again, as I've said, you know, in previous live streams, this is all going to be a, a test of all this stuff. If the stuff I'm using holds, no worries. We'll roll with it. If it does not, then we'll get the IRC axles. Um... You know, I've put the best parts money can buy into this minus, you know, the CVDs. Uh, and I didn't want to have to run this build up to being a ridiculously stupid price because this is all beautiful billet aluminum and it's going to be a lot of cleaning. It's going to get scratched up. So, you know, knowing that that's going to happen, we build these to the way we like them, have fun with them, enjoy them. But... You know, it also is a test with a lot of stuff. You know, a lot of times 
everybody knows in this hobby, it's pretty much you figure out what's going to work, what's not going to work, and then, you know, you just adjust fire from there. Another thing I did want to talk about real quick, too. So initially with setting up the ass end of this, I had a problem with the IRC shocks getting them on and having the spring perches drop into the A-arms. The spring perch, not perch, the bottom eyelet, when I first mounted it and just let it sit where it fell, they were out to here past the A-arms. And I couldn't figure out why the only way to get them mounted up is I had to push in on the spring and get it to line up. Now, I got on some of the forums and I was actually kind of shocked. Everyone's like, oh, that's normal. Just push in on it. Let it fall in. Yeah, that would work. But that was also a bad idea because putting side load force on this shock to push it in to make it fall in. Then you have side load on the shock shaft in the seals, and over time, it'll wear them out. To me, some of the advice some of these people were giving me just did not make sense. So after a bunch of research, I found out with the 2.0 A, B, C, and D blocks, the D block here in the back had plus three toe. So what was happening is it was pushing the A-arms far forward uh mr fonzie rc the designer of fonzie links he was looking at the build and that was one of the things that he noticed was that he said it looks like your a arms have a lot of forward toe on them and i, and I kind of agreed with him i said yeah that kind of doesn't look right and the only thing that causes that is the the d block so what i did i found a fast eddy zero degree toe block found it off a of ddm was like 16 bucks bought it put it in it corrected all that where the shocks fell right in and i mean it was beautiful it was a beautiful very you know a beautiful fit um so that was probably the biggest issue i had and you know, a lot of people were like, well, that's normal, it happens, but I've known others that have theirs set up with the 1.0, and I think, I don't know, because I've never had a 1.0, so I don't know if the 1.0 D-blocks, how much tow they gave that rig out of the factory, but the 2.0, being that the stock Losi 2.0 is set up for the racetrack, it's strange because it didn't seem to have that issue when it was on my stock 5T. <clears throat> Going to all the billet stuff, it added a lot of toe to these A-arms, and I couldn't get none of the shocks to line up. It was crazy because the fronts dropped right in with no issue, but the rears, they were a pain in the behind. But easy as a $16 toe block, um, put it in, corrected it, it was fine. Now, some of the things I got left to do, I got to get all the Fonzie links on. Um, today, I'm going to mount up the center section here, get the drive shafts in. I'll start uh, getting the front center brace on, the top plate, get all the drive line in. Um, then I got to do the radio tray, the Fonzie steering link on the steering servo. I do have the um, V3. JS aluminum tank. I got to get that all set up with the grommets and get that in, get the mud guards on, and this thing will just about be done. Just waiting for the engine. Um, I will do an unboxing of when the big bore shows up that I'll be using. So you guys will get to see that. Um, rims and tires i don't know if i'm gonna use the old stock low c rims and tires that i used for years i have a set of the cross cutter taylor rc rims i'm gonna put them on first see how they look because they are built aluminum or i'm thinking maybe doing another set of the 3d printed like i did on the uh w5 ultimate mcd because i do like the way these looked um 
but then I'll have to buy the steel hubs, get rid of the 24 millimeter hexes, but that'll be one of the last things that kind of gets done to uh, test all that out, see how it looks, but, um, oh, and I forgot, I still got to get my uh, outerwear covers on the shock, so that's what I'm going to be working today, that'll probably be in the next video, probably the next video that I put out. You guys will see what this looks like, just about basically completed, minus the engine and exhaust. Um, the body is going to get a wrap, but that will be the very last thing that I do as far as that. So, I do appreciate everybody following along. Please leave me a comment down at the bottom. Let me know what you think of the build. Any ideas, suggestions, you know, I'm always open to positive criticism, as long as you keep it positive, no negativity, but yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying the build so far from the majority of all this I've been doing live on the live stream, so by me dropping these videos, it's going to be just a refresher for a lot of you, and then of course any of the new people tuning in, obviously you're going to see what we're doing. But the low C5T billet build is almost complete. So once again, thank you for all the support from all my viewers. Hope you guys are enjoying this build. And as always, until next time, I'm out of here.